Welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor, and today on a very special edition of our Weight Loss Wednesday, I have with me Julia Hayes. Julia is our resident nutritionist and health coach at Cabral Wellness Institute, and what she does is she actually helps fine-tune clients programs. So all of our people who come in for body transformation, they actually work with a personal trainer, they use our fat loss and nutrition plan, and then what Julia can do is actually help guide them to take them to that next level, to get them better results, maybe to come up with meal planning, or to work with certain things like food sensitivities, increasing omega-3s, working on digestion, all of those really nice things that you need once you've gone from just maybe eating poorly or not your best to then eating a better nutrition-based diet. Again, how do you take that to the next level? So, Julia, thank you for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. We're gonna work on one specific topic because there's so many things that she could talk with you about. I asked her, one of the things that I know just from being in practice and working with um, our wellness-based clients is it's kind of, sometimes it's easy throughout the day until you get to dinner. And then you get home, you know, it's like the stress from work is finally maybe going away and then you want to snack, you want to eat, you want to eat all the food in the house. So it's one of those things where I say, what can we do to help clients at this point in their day? And it's my opinion that really weight loss, so the battle to lose weight is won at dinner and after dinner. Julie, tell me a little bit about how you're guiding clients with your nutrition plan and what you have to say when they're getting to dinner time and what are the, you know, some of the tricks they could do. Yeah, so I always explain to clients that it's best to um, have a dinner that's low inflammatory. Um, at the end of the day, um, your body is already stressed from whatever you've been doing, work, childcare, and a low inflammatory diet is gonna set your body up for proper digestion throughout the night. And I also um, suggest the clients that want to lose weight have a low starch dinner, so mm -hmm. something lower in sugar, lower in carbohydrates, because that excess blood sugar in their bloodstream is going to be stored as fat uh, since they're not burning many calories later at night. I often suggest that it be a smaller portion maybe than lunch because again, you want to properly digest your food so that your body can actually work to put you into a deep sleep. If you're so you're saying basically the whole quantity of food in their plate should maybe be a little bit smaller than they might have a lunch. Sure, yeah, especially if they're used to maybe working out after work. Yep then lunch can t tend to be a little bit larger so that they can get them through the day, more energy, and then dinner is a little bit smaller so that they're you know, properly digesting it. Usually just a protein and a veggie, again, for clients that are looking to, to lose weight. Good, so I think one of those that's a big takeaway is that the actual size of the meal should maybe not be as large because they're not going to be burning off that as fuel for the rest of the day. And so maybe a larger lunch or a larger breakfast would be a better help to them. So then what do you say though to help keep those clients satiated? Like what is, so if you're having them have a protein and veggies, like what, how much veggies can they have? What would that quantity be? Usually about two cups of veggies if they're just doing veggies. And I, mm -hmm. I like to tell clients that if they're Protein is something flat like fish or chicken, that it be the size of their hand. It's a good measure, especially out if you're at a restaurant um, and you can't really weigh something. Sure. Or, and if it's a filet or a steak or something, maybe a burger, something that's a little bit denser, the size of your fist, and then kind of two fistfuls of vegetables. And another trick for keeping yourself satiated is good fats. So um, maybe a little bit of avocado or olive oil um, after you steam your veggies, some olive oil on top, mm -hmm. or um, cooking with a little bit of grass-fed butter or coconut oil. So you're having your clients count calories at dinner or just focus on the foods? More focus on the foods, less yeah. about um, calories and more about low inflammatory foods that are lower in carbs and starch. Good. So I think that's our first big takeaway is that looking at the actual size and quantity of the food that you're having and then focusing on the actual macronutrients, which just simply means your proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. What types of carbohydrates? It's not that you can't eat any carbohydrates. It's just you're mo maybe more focused on the high quality nutrient dense ones like the vegetables, which are gonna have more fiber anyways and keep you more satiated. So I think that's great. But what about the clients who say, you know, that might not be enough food, I just get really hungry at night. Should they have an appetizer first? And if so, what type of appetizer would that be? Many of my clients go out to dinner for work events and I tell them that uh, a more nutrient dense, higher um, density appetizer like a salad with a little bit of olive oil. So again, not having too much 
of um, a high dense food like a protein or um, a heavy starch, but the salad is a good appetizer to start. Maybe something like a shrimp cocktail if they think maybe they'll have a salad as their actual entree, that can also be a good restaurant appetizer. Sure, and then what type of salad? Like is, can it be a Caesar salad? Can it be, you know, can it have any dressing or is it just the olive oil? What do you recommend so that they don't, because I just know that a lot of salad dressings could be 200, 300 calories in themselves. And then, you know, if it's a Caesar, it might have its own thing. So what are some of the things that you would say you would have on that salad? Yep. So usually just a garden salad, a mixed greens, like a mescaline greens or baby spinach is best because mm -hmm. again, that's highest in nutrients. Caesar salads tend to come with romaine lettuce, which is really just water, not much nutrients. And those salad dressings are obviously more caloric. So I recommend just an olive oil, maybe a little bit of balsamic or lemon juice as a dressing, salt and pepper, most restaurants and obviously at home you can do, um, is a much better option than any of the other creamy sure. type of dressings. So more greens than anything else, yes. like not, obviously we're not doing any croutons, we're not doing anything like that, but maybe some tomatoes if it comes with that, and some other vegetables, but not a lot of extras on top of it. Correct. Yep. Good. Good. So I think that's helpful as well because you can have a salad and the salad itself could be less than 100 calories, but it's a big bowl of salad and that's going to help you fill your stomach. One thing I would recommend too is if you are starting to get very hungry at dinner time, it's to actually control your stress response, which is something that we don't you know, always talk about. And it's just to work on the relaxation response and that when you're eating, that you're actually chewing your food and you're not just swallowing it whole. Mm -hmm. So the act of chewing itself starts to signal the brain that you are eating and it, you know, food is coming and you'll become more satiated that way. But if you just inhale your food literally and you don't swallow, then you're not gonna be as satiated. So I think that's a great tip. Now, what about your clients? They do go out to dinner. Are they allowed to have wine every time they go out? Or if they're trying to lose weight, do we not have alcohol? You know, I know that there's obviously a lot of work functions. What do you give for advice in that, in that regards? Clients that are looking to lose weight, my, my advice is always to cut the wine out. It's um, high in sugar and it also, the alcohol slows your metabolism. So you're kind of dealing with two things working against you as far as weight loss is concerned. So I always recommend no wine if you're trying to lose weight, no alcohol of any kind really. Okay. Um, and that's because of the sugar in the wine? The sugar in the wine, again, it's later at night, you're gonna end up storing most of that sugar as fat. So it's, yes, mostly the sugar in the wine and that the alcohol then slows your metabolism so you're not gonna be as efficient at, at burning body fat. Good, yeah, no, and I, I completely agree. That is, it's, alcohol is one of those things that we do eliminate in our plan for the first 21 days. And then after that, you need to really see how your body reacts to it. Because we both know we have clients that gain two, three pounds after a night of just having a couple glasses of wine when they go out. And that isn't because they ate 7,000 plus calories, which would be that two pounds or so. It's because they, had an, they have an inflammatory-based reaction to it. And especially we see people with digestive-based disorders, if they have any type of yeast overgrowth, fungal overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth, that wine is the perfect prebiotic, basically, to feed all of that yeast and candida overgrowth. So I know you've had clients that have just eliminated just the alcohol and lost like seven pounds in a week. Yeah, right? correct. Yeah. yeah, which is pretty amazing because we're not creating a massive um, caloric deficit because they can still eat those same calories that they might get from a 120 calorie glass of wine, but we're cleaning up the diet. And that's why it's really not all about counting calories. And that's the things that, you know, we like to share with you that we don't count calories we count the nutritious foods that we are eating. And then um, if you do enjoy having a glass or two of alcohol with friends, no problem at all. But we, I always say you have to earn that first. So get to the point where your body's deflamed, which typically takes about 21 days to 28 days. And then you can start to go out and, and have that cheat meal once a week, see how your body reacts. If you do pretty well, you could eventually work that up to maybe twice a week. Um, I, I don't see the benefit of going out and drinking every single night, but um, you know, you, people can rationalize it however they'd like. I wanted to ask too, what are some of the best weight loss foods for dinner? So let's give people an example of uh, an actual meal, like some of the recipes that you might come up with people uh, for people when they come to you for a more customized nutrition plan. You know, we, we know that maybe they should eat certain types of food, but like what would a good meal look like that you would cook or that you would recommend? So one of my favorite fish is salmon. So a piece of salmon, again, if it's a thinner piece, you could kind of measure it by your hand, or if it's one of the thicker pieces um, by your fist. And I like to do it with a little bit of um, coconut oil. So mm -hmm. a little coconut oil on top, and actually a little bit of mustard, and salt and pepper, and then I usually bake that, and it kind of gives it a crisp little um, skin to it. 
and the mustard gives it a flavor without mm -hmm. adding, you know, any excess sugar or, um, and it almost blends nice with the coconut oil. That sounds great. And, and I, then what do you pair that with? Uh, asparagus is another one of my favorite vegetables. So I typically very quickly steam the asparagus so mm -hmm. that I don't need to use a lot of oil with the cooking and um, heat the oil too much. So I usually steam the asparagus some and then either add a little bit of um, grass-fed butter or olive oil once it's actually cooked and just kind of toss it in that and again with salt and pepper. So you have the, the protein, you have some of the good fats of the coconut oil. Um, and then you have a couple of vegetables right there as well. Let's say that um, a person has kind of reached their goal weight for the most part and wants an overall um, kind of maintenance plan health-wise. What would you add for maybe like a gluten-free starch or something like that? Like someone who wants a little bit more carbohydrate, what would be like a next good choice to that? Brown rice is a great um, option. Sweet potatoes are great. Okay. Uh, Japanese yams tend to, some people, if they don't like the overpowering sweetness of a sweet potato, sure, sure. Japanese yams are great because they're a little bit more bland like a regular potato, but right. they don't have the high glycemic index of a white potato. Definitely my favorite. Yeah. yeah. And so those are great. Sometimes I slice them up and bake those as well. Uh, they tend to, you know, come out just a little bit crunchier than if you were to, to bake the potato whole. Excellent. Yeah. No, I mean, completely agree. Those are all great foods. And what you're really trying to do is look at, I think, your meal as a whole and just say, okay, what's my protein going to be? What are my one or two vegetables going to be? What's my good fat? And then, you know, if I can, what's my healthy starch going to be as well? And so when you use a template like that, then you can start to see how it can be designed. And I know one of the things that you use with your clients as well, it's kind of like a food shopping list where you get to choose a protein, choose a couple of different carbohydrates, whether it be um, vegetables or starch-based, and then choose a healthy fat. So people can start to learn how to eat. And I think that's the important part because we don't wanna just give people recipes and all these things. We want them to learn how to eat out on their own and, and those specific things. So how long would you say a meal like that takes to cook? It takes about a half an hour, maybe okay. max. I mean, it depends on how much you're um, baking things. Again, the asparagus too. Um, sometimes I, if I'm in a rush and I don't have time to stand over the stove, sure. I just put the asparagus on a pan and then put them in the oven. And once they're almost done, do just a little bit of a sprinkle of olive oil, mm -hmm. salt and pepper, and then take them out, you know, toss it. Got um, it. So it's but, like a little crispier. Yep. Yeah, but nice. The salmon, it doesn't take long at all to prepare that stuff. Um, it just goes in the oven and then it's it's done. The brown rice, um, sometimes I'll cook it ahead of time and then I'll mm -hmm. have it in the fridge and I'll just heat it up on the stove. Once it's, sure. you know, I'm going to have it that night. And again, the same thing with the potatoes. If I cut them up, they go in the oven. So it's really just a little bit of prep and then it goes in the oven. So it's not a lot of, um, again, standing over the stove or, uh, you know, an act of, of cooking for hours right? really can be quick. Oh, without a doubt, I think that's important too because not a lot of people have that much time to cook, mm -hmm. but 30 minutes, I mean, it's gonna take you that long to do takeout, without a doubt. I mean, I would assume like, if you were to call a place, it's gonna take 45 minutes to get there, but even if you were to do takeout, it, you just you driving and picking up, you could already have that from the grocery food store and ready to go. Plus, the, the prep that you're talking about is literally getting a piece of salmon, uh, making sure it's clean, you're putting on mustard, a little coconut oil, whatever it might be. You're doing the same type of thing with the vegetables and that's your whole meal and you're baking it. So it d you don't think that you need to be like a gourmet chef to be able to create these type of recipes. Right. And that's important because we're trying to empower people to take back control of their own health and their own nutrition. And in order to do that, you have to understand that um, it may seem complicated, but that's really just before you get into it. Once you actually do it, and you go to a specific you know, food store, whatever it might be, a Whole Foods, and you say, can I order six ounces or eight ounces of fish if it's just for you? And it could be a salmon or something like that. And then you get your vegetables. That's your whole meal right there. And then just making sure that you just um, give it a little bit of flavor, which really can be as simple as like squeezing lemon, um, doing a little bit of the mustard that you talked about, doing some apple cider vinegar if you'd like that, a little bit of salt and pepper, and, and you have a, just a nice meal and it's a clean meal. And once you get used to eating like that, you can see that it's really endless possibilities with those combinations. Yeah. So it's great. We're gonna have Julia Hayes back for our Cabral house call. She's gonna be answering much more of your questions and actually some fun ones like, can you actually eat carbs with dinner? Who should be eating those carbs? Can you snack after dinner? If so, what type of snacks are most appropriate? And then some other things too, how to break that cycle of always snacking and always eating to eat so many of those calories after dinner. So thank you today for tuning into the Cabral Concept. We'll be back real soon.